Hello everyone, this is Experiment Design in Computer Science, Week 4, Comparison Testing, Part 1, Comparison Testing. Let's get going. So, in this lecture, we're going to continue the topic that we started last week, that is the new hypothesis statistical testing. We will learn about two specific cases that are very common in studies of well, any kind of experiments, but especially when we are studying algorithms. We're going to talk about first hypothesis testing on the difference between two treatments that we're going to call it comparison testing and hypothesis testing when there is a strong correlation factor between the uh, observations of the two treatments, which is pair testing. So in this text, sometimes you're going to hear the word treatments. And sometimes when you look for statistical books, if you're looking to study in a textbook, you also be studying this, this word treatment. The word treatment here is from the medicine literature, but we're go in general, it means different techniques that you're comparing, different things. So for instance, if you're using algorithm A and algorithm B to solve a problem, these algorithms are your treatments. Okay, so when you hear treatment, you hear, you, you think about the things that we are comparing. So let's start. Let's talk about choose sample testing. And one thing about this class is that I want to show to you that just by changing the model, by changing the statistical model in these two cases that we're going to study today, we are going to use the same technique that we used last lecture. The, the technique that we studied, the, we used last lecture is very general and we can use it in many different situations by just changing the model. Okay, so just let, let's recap then the last lecture. In the last lecture, we studied how to use statistical inference to determine the answers to questions about experimental data. For example, are the observations produced by process B different from an expected value N? So we used what we call the new hypothesis statistical testing to answer this question. So the idea is that the process that we're studying is a random variable that follows a normal distribution. And we take a sample from that random, random variable and we analyze the sample. We see what was the result of the sample. And we calculate a statistic. And remember, a statistic is a function on a sample. So we calculate a statistic and the value of the statistic will tell us how surprising is the value of that sample. If the value of that sample is not very surprising, then we must assume that everything is as normal and we cannot say that there is any new uh, effect going on. But if our sample, if we calculate a statistic and the statistic tells us that our sample has very surprising values, they are very low or they are very high or they have a very big variance, etc., we will say that mm, uh, this is surprising. This is not what I expected. This does not follow the new hypothesis. So I must support a new hypothesis. The, the alternate hypothesis that will indicate that things are not exactly as I expected. Okay, now this is very good for a number of situations, simple situations where you have like one sample that you want to test. However, what if you want to compare two samples? So the comparison of Two different approaches is very common. It's very common the situation where you have two samples and you want to compare them. For example, let's say that you want to test a drug. If you want to test a new drug to see if it's good against disease, the normal way to do it is to do a controlled test. In the controlled test, you have the drug, that is the, the treatment group, and you have the control group, which is a group that does not take the drug. And you're going to compare both of them. When you're testing algorithm, usually you want to test a new algorithm and compare it with an old algorithm. So again, you have two samples, one sample with the results of the new algorithm, one sample with the results of the old algorithm. Or maybe you are testing two different website designs. So you have two websites and you check the user preference for the first website and the scores of the user preference for the web first website will be one sample, and the scores for the user preference for the second website will be another sample. So in all of these cases, you have to compare two samples. Now, remember that last class, we were comparing one sample against a fixed value. So in the last class, it was one sample against a fixed value. In this class, we are going to compare two samples. Okay? So this is called two sample testing. 
So let's, let's use a concrete example to illustrate the calculation. Let's say that we have a steel factory. And one of the steps of the steel factory is to cut the steel rods in fixed size. So you want every rod to be exactly, let's say, 50 meters. So you, want, you have a machine that cut every rod exactly 50, 50 meters. However, of course, the machine does not cut exactly 50 meters. Sometimes it's one centimeter short, sometimes it's one centimeter long. It's natural that there will be a little bit of error. Of course, you want to minimize this error. You want this error to be as small as possible. So let's imagine that there is an engineer that wants to create a new process for cutting that, according to this engineer, has a smaller cutting error. Okay, so how would you do the experiment for that? Think about it a little bit. Okay, let's, let's test it. So, we have two methods for cutting a steel rod, the old method and the new method. And we want to figure out which one has the smallest cutting error. Now, think about the following questions to design your experiment. One, how do we calculate the cutting error of each of the methods, the cutting error of the old method and the cutting error of the new method? Think about how we calculate that. Then think about what is the observation in our experiment and what is the sample, okay? Now, now what is the variable that measures the cutting error between the difference in the two methods? And finally, now that we have the measure, the sample, and the variable, what is the statistical hypothesis? And remember that last lecture, I told you that a statistical hypothesis can be expressed as an equation. So what is the statistical hypothesis that we can use to, to represent this experiment? I'm going to answer each of these questions in the following, but before I do, I suggest that you pause the video now and try to answer these four questions by yourself to exercise your memory of last class. Okay? All right, let's continue. So, let's start with the first two questions. How do we calculate the cutting error? And what is the observation and sample necessary? So, we can think of the cutting error as the difference of the target length and the real length. So, we have the target length, let's say 50 meters, and the real length, it's like 50 meters and 10 centimeters. So, that difference is the cutting error. Here, we're going to call it xi minus l. Okay? Now, if we assume that the cutting error depends only of the method of cutting, old method or new method, we can estimate the mean cutting error using a sample of rods. So we get like 10 rods cut using the old method, and we can calculate the mean cutting error, that is the sum of the length of the rod minus the target length divided by the number of rods. So this is the mean cutting error for that method, the old method or the new method. Now, this gives us a mean cutting error, so this mu, remember that mu usually means means. So mu e is estimated by this average. So mu e is the real cutting error of the method. And ex is what we estimated. So we estimated using the average of the cutting error of the sample. Okay, now, now that we do this, we can start to think about statistical inferences. So we can do statistical inferences. For example, let's think about only one method. If this was last class, we would only analyze one method. So we could do a hypothesis test like this. Is the error of method Y equal or under a required value R? So we can say, okay, we want to make a test to make sure that our method is less, or the error, the mean error of the R method is less than 10 centimeters. Okay, so our new hypothesis is that the, the error is less than 10 centimeters. Our alternate hypothesis is that the error is more than 10 centimeters. <clears throat> we can use the technique from the last lecture to solve this problem. Now, what if we want to compare the new method with the old one? It's not one method versus a fixed value. It's one method that has errors and another method that also has errors. So how do we compare that? Well, so this is the idea. Each of the methods under the statistical analysis, we represent each of the methods as a random variable 
that this random variable is distributed under a, a normal distribution. So the population one would be the first method with an estimated error and a variance for this error. The second method would be another random variable with another normal distribution with another uh, cutting error and another variance. So we have two normal distributions, one for the new method, one for the old method. Now, this is where we start to use statistics. If you remember from your statistic classes, if you have two random variables that are distributed under our normal, so normal distribution, you can add them together. The sum of two normal distributions is also a normal distribution, or to be exact, the sum of two variables, two random variables distributed in the normal distributions is also a random variable distributed in the normal distributions. So we can start to think about a new variable, a new random variable, our diff, which is the difference between the old and the new. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do our test on this ediff, this estimation of the difference between the errors. Now, because ediff also follows a normal distribution, we can do exactly the same thing that we did last class, which is do a new hypothesis, alternate hypothesis test on this difference of errors. So our new hypothesis will be that both of the methods. So what's the new hypothesis here? The new hypothesis is that, well, what's the simplest thing that could happen? The simplest thing is that both of the methods are identical. We created a new method, but in reality, the new method is not very different from the old one. So the new hypothesis is that both of the methods actually belong to the same normal distribution and the difference between the means is zero. So in the new hypothesis, the difference between the means is zero. In the alternate hypothesis, the two methods are actually different. So the difference between the means is not zero. So we're going to do our test in this estimator, which is the difference between the means of the two methods. So now that we have an idea of what we want to test, let's do the let's study the general model for comparing the two samples. So what I'm going to start talking now, and if you did not understand what I said until the last feed, until the last slide, I recommend that you stop and go back because what I'm going to talk about now is the general statistical model for any um, comparison, okay? Any two, samples, uh, any two samples comparison. So let's consider that we have some value y, some estimated value y, that is taken from several methods, method one, method two, or method three. We understand that this value comes from some normal distribution with mean mu i, and we also have an error that's away. So this error means that this is a random variable. Every time we sample it, it would be a little bit different. So if we consider that, we can represent one observation from our experiment as yij. So yij, so one observation from our experiment, can be represented as the mean of i, the mean of method i, plus the error of method i and observation j. So i is one or two, let's say if we only have two methods, and j is every observation that we are having. So this is the random variable that represents every observation in our experiment. It has one component, which is the mean of the method, and one component, which is the error of that individual observation. Now, <clears throat> From this model for the variable, if we assume that this epsilon ij are independent and follow a normal distribution, the two samples will look like this. So this is the same um, figure that we showed before. We have one method that follows a normal distribution and another method that also follows a normal distribution with different means and different variances. So, what is the variable uh, y? So in this case, in the case of the bars, since we want to measure if one met the new method produces steel rods with a smaller cutting error, the variable that we're going to use is what we described before, the absolute error. So y is the target 
the target at left minus the length of the actual bar. Okay, so <clears throat> going back to the two normal models, we can build, build the hypothesis around the mean of the absolute error. Okay, and in that case, our new hypothesis is that the difference of the mean for method one and method two is zero, or the mean of method one is equal to mean of method two. And the alternate hypothesis is that the difference of the mean between method one and method two is smaller than zero, okay? Or bigger than zero, actually, uh, there is an error here. So mean one is smaller than mean two. So let's assume uh, for now that the variance of the process is unknown. We don't know the variance of the normals, but we know that is the same for both process. Well, very close for both process. If we assume that the variance is very, very close for both process, we can estimate this variance from the samples. The formula that we use to, ask to, to estimate then is this formula. And you don't need to remember this formula, but you just know what you need to remember is that we are going to estimate the variance for the, the variance of the model based on the samples. And we are assuming right now that this variance is the same for both. Okay, based on this estimator for the variance, we can calculate the t-statistic. And remember, we use the t-distribution when we don't know the variance, so we have to estimate it from the, from the sample. Okay, so our t-statistic is exactly like in the last lecture. We have our mean, which in this case is the difference between the two, uh, the two, the, the two samples. This is minus the real the different the real difference between the means that we don't know divided by the estimate of the error and this is will be approximately distributed following a tree distribution with n1 plus n2 divided by two degrees of freedom and n1 and n2 is the size of the sample for one and for the other now let's go back and remember that our new hypothesis is that the difference is zero and the alternate hypothesis is that the difference is smaller than zero. So n1 is smaller, our difference is negative. In this case, since we are assuming under the new hypothesis that the difference is zero, and we go here, it's equivalent to what we said in this slide here. The new hypothesis is that the difference is zero. So we assume under the new hypothesis that the difference is zero. So our statistic, our t statistic, will be the average of one sample minus the average of the second sample divided by the estimated error. And that's it, okay? Now we reject the new hypothesis if our statistic is smaller than the, um, it's smaller than the, percentile of the alpha value that we selected. Now remember, now that we talk about alpha, that to do the experiment, we need to select three value values. We need to select alpha that we determine directly, which is the confidence of the test. We need to select beta, which is the power of the test. And we need to select the meaningful difference. What is the minimum difference that we are interested for our experiment? Let's say that for this experiment, we want a traditional 95% confidence. So we select alpha to be 0 0.05 and we desire a power of 0 0.8, okay? Finally, let's assume that we are interested to know differences between the standard rods and the actual cut of at least 50 centimeters. Of course, these values need to be selected depending on each particular experiment, where the requires of the experiment, etc. But let's assume these values for our calculations. So we are going to calculate the t-test using exactly the same t-test that we used last last uh, last week. Okay. So we read this table, the CSV table with the the, the steel rods data, and <clears throat> we do the t-test on the length error depending on the process, okay? And when we do that, we get our t-statistic minus 14, 
and that gives us our p-value of 9 minus E16. And since we selected our confidence level to be 0.05, this p-value tells us that we can reject the new hypothesis. So the two methods are not the same, and the new method has a smaller cutting error than the old method. Okay? And we also have our confidence interval, so we know that the difference in the cutting error is at least 7 centimeters. Now, if it's at least 7 centimeters, there is a chance that it's possible to imagine that this difference might actually not be as big as our desired difference. In this case, we would need to calculate also the power of the test to see what is the probability that we would detect a difference that is as big as we desire. Okay, after we calculate the test, remember that it's also necessary to calculate the assumptions of the test that we are doing. In this case, for two samples, we have three assumptions. The first one is the normality of the um, observations, the residuals of the observations. We can calculate a QQ plot between the standard normal quantiles and the observations. And that will show us that the observation seems to be, from both samples, they seem to be approximately normal. Okay? Then, for the two samples, remember that we are assuming that both samples have about the same variance. So we need to test that hypothesis. If they don't have this, the, the same variance, we have to change our calculations. So, uh, we test then, we can plot the variances. So, as you can see here, we are making a residual plot. And the residual plot shows that the variances between the two are roughly similar. We can also do the Flinner test. The Flinner test is a, is a hypothesis test that will tell us if the, uh, the, error, the variances between two samples can be assumed to be similar or different. Okay? And in this case, we see that we have a p-value of 0 0.2. It's very likely that, that we cannot reject the new hypothesis that the variance of the two samples is the same in this case. Finally, for independence, as we mentioned last class, there is no general test for the independence assumption. So what we need to do is that we need to guarantee how we are going to make sure that our observations are independent. Okay? All right, so let's extend a little bit. What happens if our uh, variance is not the same? Do we need a completely new test? Actually, no. If the variances of the two are not the same, we can just modify our test a little bit. What we do is a modified t-test that is called the Welch t-test, where the statistic is calculated like this. Uh, you see the top is the same. We're calculating the average between the difference of the average between the two samples. And what changes is that we are calculating the error as a proportion of the error of sample one and this error of sample two weighted by the sample size of sample one and the sample size of, uh, of sample two. Also, the degrees of freedom of our t-distribution is calculated slightly different. So the degree of freedom of our, of our t-distribution will be calculated using this formula. Do you remember the formula? It's not necessary, okay? Just remember that it's, a, it's the Welch t-test if, um, if the variances are not the same. Actually, if you're going to calculate this with R, all that we need to know here is when we do the t-test, we specify to the function that the variances are not equal. Then R will automatically use the correct estimation for the error and the correct degrees of freedom for the T distribution. So in this class, it's important that you have an understanding of the, um, of the, the, the definitions of the different tests that we're talking about, the important points of the di different tests. The equations, the exact equations are not necessary, okay? So, to summarize this video, to compare an estimator from samples of two populations that follow a normal distribution, we set our statistic and the corresponding hypothesis to be the differences of the target variables. This technique uh, is very versatile. You, can, versatile. you can use it for many different experiments. Okay? Of course, 
There are some cases where this approach does not apply. You need to test the assumptions if the um, values are normal, if the variances are the same. And as we need to, as we are going to see in the next class, in the next video, you need to be careful to make sure that there is no dependence between the observations of the two samples. But that is for the next video. See you there.